All right, in this second example, we're going to work through our process and see what happens for these five critical details on the right-hand side that we're looking for on these each feature. It's just those five features on the right-hand side. So here, we're going to factor the denominator as always so that we can identify our points of discontinuities. And the denominator this time has a common factor of 2, so I'm going to GCF factor the 2 out and get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we use the magic X method to continue. There's a one here and a one there. You might even recognize that's a perfect square trinomial. So the top is one, the bottom is two, the product that gives you one and as of you two is one and one. So this is gonna be X plus one times X plus one with a two out in front. So that is fully factored, check. And so I can identify those points of discontinuity, which are going to be X equals negative one and then Again, x equals negative 1. It only needs to be there once, not twice. My point of discontinuity would set the domain so that it's all real numbers, comma, x can't be just negative 1 one time. Our goal is to decipher if it's a vertical asymptote or if it's a whole. Those are the only two ways a POD can play for rational functions. So it's either one of those, not both. And so our job is to back to the numerator before I can make that decision. So I look up top and I see there's a negative sign hanging out. And anytime I have an A value that can be factored out or forced factor here, even though it's not common, I'm gonna pull it, pull it out so that I can do the magic X on the opposite signs here. So it's X squared minus three X minus four. And with that, I'm going to magic X with the negative four on top and the negative three on the bottom. Now the negative four has factors of two and two, which don't add to be three, or I do four and one, which I can subtract to make a three. I need the four to be negative, so that way it results in that uh, negative three on the bottom. So the top factors to be negative one times x minus four times x plus one. Now keep in mind, I can only jump from the magic numbers to the magic factoring when the a value is one. If it was any other number, I'd have to use that grouping technique that we have practiced. And then that's all over our common factors on the bottom, or our factored form on the bottom, bringing this over and up, which is two times x plus one times x plus one. I could have put x plus one squared, doesn't matter. What matters though, is that I've reduced this function, which is step three. This function has an x plus one common factor, common binomial factor that needs to be reduced out. That's a big one. Anything divided by itself is one. So this function reduces to be negative one times x minus four over two x plus one. Now that's gonna be a little tricky in our analysis because down here we see that Factors that reduce out produce holes. And so students get really stuck on that and say, oh, it reduced out, so it's a hole. But the remain overrides. It is remaining. So that means that actually, even though one of them factored out, remember there was two of them, x plus one is still in my final reduced version, which means that this negative one is a vertical asymptote. So this point of discontinuity is specifically vertical class built. There are no holes because even though it reduced out, the remaining overrides. The reduce out has to be completely reduced out, reduced out, which means gone. This one is not. So there are no holes. Even though one reduced out, the vertical asymptote is at negative one. So I got that part done. Two things in one there. And now we continue on down our list. So now we move into step four. Step four says you take the numerator that's left, which in our case is negative one times X minus four. You set that equal to zero and solve. And so the negative one out in front, please don't call that a zero. That just divides out to the other side. It doesn't do anything. So it reduces the function uh, or reduces out when you're solving. So you get X minus four equal to zero. Add the four to the other side and you get X equals four is your x-intercept, so x equals 4. Our job is to write it as a coordinate off over here, so we just put 4, comma, 0. And then step 5, 
we need to identify the y-intercept, and we do that by plugging in f of zero. Now, we sh when I say plug it in, we should be plugging into the reduced version, not the original one. So we should be going right here, and this is f of x reduced, and we want to plug a zero in here. So we want to make this f of zero be negative one times zero minus four over two times zero plus one. And you work that out. The top's going to be a positive four. The bottom is going to be a two. And so that works out to be a four divided by two is two. And so my y height when x is zero is two, which means my y intercept is zero comma two because I plugged in zero and got two as my output. The only thing we have to figure out left is the horizontal asymptote, which just goes back to my three options, my three rules. And my three rules, as shown on the previous problem, is all about what's the comparison with the degree of the top and the bottom. So the degree of the top is one. The degree of the bottom is one. So my job this time is to do my leading coefficient. I say a top over a bottom. And what that means when the degree and the top and bottom are the same is you just take your leading coefficients, the a values, I call them, and you write y equals negative 1 over 2. This is your horizontal asymptote. Negative 1 half is what we're looking for. Those are the five key details for this graph that we were looking for.